What's up guys, Sean here, Shock Surplus. We are doing an Icon Frequently Asked Questions. We get tons and tons of questions on Icon Shocks, along with Fox King, Rancho, Bill Stein, all those other brands as well. But we've got a lot of questions on Icon. A lot of people, you guys have questions. So we pulled these from YouTube, Instagram, our emails, the really just basic level questions around Icon Shocks in general. We've ran Icon Shocks. I've ran Icon Shocks for 50,000 miles, a couple rebuilds on my own Tacoma. I've been in a forerunner on Icon. I've been in a Jeep Wrangler on Icon. I've been, what else, on a Bronco on Icon. So a lot of Icon experience here. We sell thousands of Icon shocks a year. So this is kind of comes from experience, answering hundreds of shock related questions a day. So a lot of experience in the shock situation. That's all we do here, shock surplus. So hopefully we answer your questions here. If we don't, Hit us up, email us, answer in the com or question in the comments, and uh, we will definitely get to it. Our Icon Shocks Aluminum. Yes and no. They've got their 2.0 aluminum series here. This aluminum body is probably one of the nicest aluminum 2.0 shock bodies I've felt. Fox has a aluminum body 2.0 shock, but these just feel noticeably lighter. I love the way it feels, the way it looks. So 2.0, they have aluminum. They also have 2.5 inch aluminum bodies in their EXP series. This is a unassembled EXP ride height adjustable shock. We're rebuilding these, but 2.5 inch aluminum bodies, they do. On their coilovers, I don't believe they've made that jump yet. These coilovers are still uh, steel body and that might be out of uh, concern for the, the, the threads because on a steel body, you can adjust the preload on the spring uh, while the springs are under tension. On an aluminum body, it's ill-advised too because while the, the collar is under tension at the spring and you try to adjust it, it'll damage the aluminum threads because they're softer than steel. So hope that helps. I believe more aluminum bodied 2.5 inch shocks are in the pipeline for Icon. Um, it's a very big manufacturing lift, but Knowing Icon, they're gonna get there. How long do Icon shocks last? How long should I rebuild? This is gonna come down to the driver and how spirited you are. Icon shocks on a, a rig that sees nothing but dirt every weekend just thrashing around, you probably need a rebuild by 20, 30,000 miles easily. Recommended rebuild intervals are in the 50,000 or sooner range. If you're just daily driving, you could probably get away with longer than that. And you, the shocks aren't gonna fail uh, if you don't rebuild them. What happens over time is the, the shocks just end up leaking a little bit more from a pitted shaft that damages the seals. So maybe a little bit shock oil leakage, maybe a little bit loss of nitrogen pressure. And this kind of just de-optimizes, I don't know the word, their your, your damping abilities. So if the shock starts feeling a little bit more squishy, maybe you're hitting your bump stops a little bit more often than the normal, it's probably time for a rebuild. If you want your shocks operating at top efficiency, definitely by 50,000 miles. If you're thrashing it quite often, it's just a good idea to factor in service every 30 to 40,000 miles. Are Icon shocks better than Fox? Are Icon shocks better than King? These questions, we, we get these questions a lot from people kind of new to the space. They're basically comparing, you know, yellow brand, blue brand, orange brand, which one's the best? They're all made with top-notch components. We've torn apart every single shock. We've rebuilt every single shock there. They all have a little bit different design. And when you're considering is Icon better than King or better than Fox, these are the, the pistons out of Fox King Icon. And it's really the base level behaviors of the shocks themselves. Are they better? It's not whether or not they're better or not. It's whether they the shock designs and damping characteristics are suited for your ride and for the driver. Do you want better handling uh, on road and low speed stuff? You carry a lot of gear. Icon might be right for you because of the digressive tune. Do you want super soft plush on road ride? Icon really isn't known for that because a digressive shock isn't really known for that. Can you tune it that direction? Yeah, you can get there. Softer springs, more bleed in the piston, stuff like this can really help get you there. But if you know that's what you want out of the gate, then maybe just go with the Fox or a King product. I've ran Icon myself, heavily loaded vehicle, a go fast vehicle. These things might be firm up front for good tight handling, which I like, but they also get buttery smooth uh, the faster you go. A lot of race performance shocks get smoother the faster you go, and Icon is definitely no exception. How much lift do Icon 2.5 inch shocks give? 
Uh, they're really talking about uh, an adjustable height coilover like this. And the amount of lift that you're gonna get is gonna vary by application. This is specifically here is a Tundra. We see two and a half inches to three inches of lift out of this out of the box setup. And that lift is achieved by preloading this coil spring. The more you preload, the more height you're gonna get. Why is that? Because the more preload you do, the more tension that this spring becomes under, and then the less the vehicle is gonna settle on that spring. Three inches is about the max we recommend on preloading your, your, your springs. You can change out these springs. So if this spring is likely a 14 by 650 pound rated spring, maybe 16 inches, you can change the different springs for longer springs, different rates, and this is gonna affect how much actual ride height gain you get. But typically two inches out of the box on most applications, you know, Ranger, Silverado, F-150, Tacoma, 4Runner, GX, Tundra, all of those are set preloaded at about two inches of lift out of the box and then you could preload further from there. Uh, the more you preload past about two and a half inches, you will start affecting actual ride quality. It may be too firm. I've seen a lot of examples where people are preloading way too much in order to get three, three and a half inches of lift on an out of the box spring and ride quality will suffer because that spring energy just has less to go. Vehicle energy onto the spring just has less places to go the more you compress that spring. So that's true up to a certain point, but we aren't gonna dive into the details too much there. How do you adjust Icon shocks on the truck? Adjusting well on the truck is usually accomplished by loosening this nut and then having a coil spring um, spanner wrench and just adjusting. With the steel threaded collars, you can make that happen. There are other ways to unload the tension on the spring Springs, whether through stuffing one tire and raising the other tire up high off the ground through either an obstacle or a forklift or getting with some of those clamped coil spring compressors and doing that while on the vehicle since it is a kind of a compact package you can do that while on the vehicle then loosen the top coil spring collar so not too hard to do you just got to have some balls to do it how much is it to rebuild icon shocks typical market rate is between 125 to 150 dollars per shock shock and then you got materials cost on top of that. We typically quote out between $700 and $800 for a set of four 2.5 inch shocks with reservoirs. Granted, if you need new shafts, that's gonna be more money. If you need new adjusters, it's gonna be more money. If you need new reservoir body, more money. Need new hose, more money. If you need a new reservoir body, more money. We've seen that. If you need a new adjusters, more money. If you need new hose, more money. If you need new fittings, more money. So, but base level, you're looking at about, a, just kind of factor in between 150 to $175 per shock. And so four corners, that's the general cost. Not every shop that rebuilds Fox and King is gonna rebuild the Icon. Fox and King have been around a, a lot longer. So shops and teams are more uh, aware and comfortable with Fox and King. And then they, but they won't do Icon. We do Icon here, we do Fox here, Bill Stein, King. So we can make it happen. If you have questions there, hit us up at support at shocksurplus.com. How do you revalve and retune Icon shocks? You can revalve or retune Icon shocks just like any of the other shocks. You basically take it all apart, similar to what we did here. And then on the, this is Icon's digressive piston that is seen in a lot of their applications. What we don't have here are the shims that go along with this piston. But basically, if you see here, there are four bleed ports, microscopic bleed ports. Sometimes these bleed ports are taken up by a screw. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes all four bleed ports are taken up. Closing off those bleed ports is gonna make your vehicle handle tighter. Opening up all those bleed ports are gonna make your vehicle handle a little bit looser in the ride zone. Decreasing the size of the shims in terms of thickness is gonna loosen up the vehicle. Increasing those shim thicknesses is gonna kinda of tighten up the handling. The way you stack the shims are going to increase or decrease handling at certain shock uh, shaft speeds. So it can be done. It is a little bit trial and error depending on what you're looking for if you're looking for more on-road comfort then the the shims are going to be designed in a way to address that if you want more high speed handling moderate speed handling uh, and want to give up the lower speed handling then that can be done as well so a lot of different ways to tune a shock to accomplish what you want Usually under OE applications, uh, you don't wanna give up too much low speed handling to where it's too soft, 
too boaty, then you really lose the benefit of a, a, a digressive shock. Another brand or another kind of base level piston and tune might be better suited for you. What does Icon CD EV do? Well, let's talk about what si Icon CD CV does. Here you've got their, their adjustable knob here that basically adjusts compression damping. As this, this shock is moving, it moves oil through this reservoir into the reservoir. This adjustment knob basically restricts or unrestricts the amount of oil flow that is able to come into the reservoir and recirculates back into the main shock. That basically leads into what does the CD EV, the electronic valving option that Icon just came out with, is basically this but on steroids. It's always active. It uh, behaves due to a preset on the app or how the, the, the driver wants to behave. Do you want max comfort on the road or do you want max handling on the road? That's going to be between soft settings, firm settings. Do you want high speed handling? Do you want looser at the, at the higher speeds and letting your bump stops do, do the work on high speed damping. That's gonna be done through the settings. So their electronic valving uh, application is available for the Bronco, the Tundra, the Tacoma, the Forerunner, maybe some other applications by now, but it's an electronic system. Very, very nice. Probably the best top of the line system out right now, even better than a lot of the Fox offering and a lot of King offerings. It's kind of the best of all worlds, no compromise situation. Um, that goes between comfort and high-speed off-road handling. Really, really nice. I actually have it planned to get onto our Bronco at the very end. Hopefully we can make that happen. Our Icon, the one thing we see a lot of is complaints or questions about Icon shocks. Are they too stiff? Are they harsh? And this is where we kind of get into the baseline valving. Uh, a digressive shock is typically just Digressive shock valving is firmer in the daily, in the normal ride zones. On pavement, Icon shocks are firm. Maybe their bump compliance isn't similar to a, a plusher, fox, or king option, but that's because they're handling, they, they tune for handling. You can tune an Icon shock to be a little bit better bump compliance, but overall, a digressive shock just gives more feedback on potholes and speed bumps, rocky trail chatter. So a lot of people kind of misappropriate that behavior to being too stiff, too firm, too harsh because they've spent $4,000 or $5,000 on a suspension system and they expected one thing without understanding the true purpose of Icon's digressive tuning. So yes, Icon would be considered firm uh, when comparing to more of a pillowy, shaft, custom tuned king shock. And that's really where the, uh, the, the misunderstanding is, is people think that you spend a lot of money on an off the shelf uh, race product and you're gonna achieve a certain thing. Sometimes that's true, sometimes that's not. And in this regard, people are really kind of getting feedback from someone that has a custom tuned uh, Fox or King Shock, super pillowy, super plush, who knows what kind of load rating those tires are? Who knows what that specific setup is? Who knows what the spring rates are? They just have heard that maybe King or Fox are really plush and pillowy. And then they buy an Icon product expecting something similar. What Only the colors change, but that's not in reality because you got a digressive Icon shock versus a linear King shock. Vastly different baseline behaviors. So what you might call stiff, I call well in control. What you might call soft and pillowy, I call sloppy and uh, too loose. So it really comes down to the driver and what the driver wants out of their vehicle. Icons are good for some people, not good for others. Hope that addresses the too firm question that we see a lot and the unfair feedback we see on Icon shocks across the internet. How much nitrogen PSI for my Icon shocks? When we rebuild Icon shocks, we usually set them at about 200 PSI. I think that's about everything. If you have other Icon Shock questions or even application specific, if you got a Silverado or an F-150 or a Wrangler and you have a specific question uh, whether or not they're right for you, hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Support at shocksurplus.com is our email. Thanks so much for following along and we hope to see you on the trail.